initially when I would have heard about nuclear, I just think pure evil. I kid you not guys, personally, I just think pure evil. And then I would have had a conversation with Dr. Smith, many conversations, and then I would have learned the beauty of nuclear engineering and what nuclear power can do to this world. So I'm learning from my former student. Nuclear fission is the splitting of atoms to release energy from a mass, and that goes back to Einstein's equations of E is equal to mc squared. Just the fact that she attended this school, that plays a big role in them being able to see how feasible an opportunity like this is for them. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. The fact that we are able to have this program with the first person from Jamaica to ever get a PhD in nuclear engineering is truly remarkable and out of this world. When you put the control rods in the reactor, what's happening? It's absorbing the neutrons, right? So it's not something they saw on TV. This is somebody who is from their own environment. So answer me now this. Is nuclear energy safe? No. no. So when you got told you were going to a nuclear boot camp, what did you expect? Oh. Firstly, the first thing came to mind was nuclear power plants. Well, mostly nuclear bombs, but... <laughs> bombs? Nuclear had something to do with um, atoms to me, honestly. I think a nuclear engineer uh, create bombs. When nuclear waste is buried, they have people who dig it up and use it for wrong reasons like to create nuclear weapons. So nuclear waste is currently not stored anywhere underground. So where you get that information from? They're saying something, make, are you confident about saying it? Make sure so you have something to back it up. Or else we are feeding into those misconceptions and the spreading of misinformation. You're looking at the death rates per electricity production for different energy sources. Brown coal, coal, oil, biomass. I remember we talked about biomass. What, what is biomass? Burning the burning of wood. All right. What comes next? Yes. yes. And hydropower. hydropower. And nuclear is weird. Down here with wind and solar. The sweltering heat is now crippling poultry production. Of the over 300 chickens, just over 100 are left. Disappearing rivers have been disrupting livelihoods as drought conditions worsen island wide. When we talk about energy reliability, we're talking about how often we can have that energy source running. If it has a capacity factor of 30%, it means only running 30% at a time. During the hottest time in the year, these solar panels are operating at what percent capacity factor? Over 30%. Is that a lot? And so capacity factor of nuclear, how does it look? Extremely. Right, if the average is out, it's going to be 92%. The only energy source that comes close is geothermal. The bigger mission here is to take a hard look at the energy mix in Jamaica. We have a very large dependence on imported fossil fuels to produce electricity. It's extremely expensive. Jamaica, we know 89% fossil fuels and wind, solar, and hydro. Do you ever hear people complain about the electricity bill? All the time. You're plugging your phone, you're using it at the same time. They're like, why are you running up my electricity bill? In some households, they are forced to not use the lights during the night. Say the Prime Minister come to you and say, what energy sources would be the best to use in Jamaica? We can use solar. Yes. Prime Minister said we can't use wind. Yes. But we can't use that alone because why? They're not on all the time, right? So we'll go over to the base load energy sources. And base load energy means 24-7 energy. Jamaica is doing this. It's using the 24-7 electricity from, from fossil fuel. And it's getting the variable energy from renewables. There are some parts of the world where say, we don't want that, but we have this. But there was a study done by the University of the West Indies that identified eight Caribbean countries that have geothermal capability. 
Jamaica was not on that list, unfortunately. I remember how small our, our hydro capability is. If you now have hydro capacity or geothermal, then you can look at nuclear as 24 seven energy because you have a higher capacity factor and you mix it with renewables, right? To do this boot camp, I put together a team of Jamaicans, Americans, people from the UK, Canada, who are very knowledgeable in this area. We're gonna do a workshop called Climate Fresk, where you guys get to collaborate and try to figure out how climate change works. Transportation, agriculture, building use. Wait, why you put in a one And it's Strong. melting yeah. now. Yeah, that really is carbon dioxide okay. into the atmosphere. Three, four, five, six, stand right here, guys. Seven. So here's your slow poke too. As reactors go, this is really, really tiny. This is a tiny reactor. And all we're doing is just introducing those samples into the, um, the core. So it goes through these white tubes, and that's where it's exposed to its neutrons. This is going to show me how far it's my pleasure always to expose young minds to what we do here. Furthermore, these kids are very smart. They ask great questions. They're very enthusiastic. That's the actual rate of the core. That's the actual rate of the core, yes. Miguel, are you good? Next up, There are a whole lot of opportunities for a country like Jamaica. And we're just not utilizing as much as we can. And the brain drain is a big problem. And that's part of the reason why several industries cannot expand, because you need a critical mass so to speak, of educated people. If there are no jobs here, or if the, the salaries are low, they leave, and then we lose that to developed countries who already have that critical mass. Why didn't you leave? For the same reason. We didn't want to be a part of the brain drain, because then nothing will progress. So every energy source, no matter which one, all of them requires critical minerals or critical materials that need to be mined to be able to, to harness that energy source. One uranium pellet that is this size can produce the same amount of energy as one ton of coal. 120 gallons of oil to give me the same energy as this. Why do we use nuclear in space? It takes a ton of energy to put anything into space at all. So most of the things that we do in space are powered by solar. Well, the sun's energy is much more powerful closer to the sun. By the time you get to Saturn, it's 1% as strong at Saturn as it is near Earth. And so if you want to do anything out there, you need something like nuclear energy. You can actually just take existing nuclear waste that people don't know what to do with right now, that is currently sitting in safe locations. We can take that and then power rovers, power satellites, power landers. It opens up a lot of opportunity. And so I encourage you, if that's something that interests you, to really pursue that. This is something that you can really get ahead of and participate in. You have the abilities, but you miss out on the opportunities because no one gets to see what you are capable of. Getting straight A's is not enough. They have to know what you are capable of be too much. So the competition is immense. All right, Positrons, we present you with uranium. <laughs> An electronic radiation detector. We're not as common as, let's say, a proton, a neutron, or an electron. You have to know a little more about the atom to know about the position. But don't worry, the opportunity to win big, the bigger prize yes. is during the group competition. Your pitch will start with a story that highlights the problem that you are trying to solve. I can give you an example right now. The problem with this room is that you don't have air conditioner and we have bone up and we're at in here. After you do that, your solution, how it works. How are you going to introduce your technology in such a way that the public will accept it? I am Davian Irwin, co-founder of NESA. Nova. Safe Nuclear Output Version Alpha. Nuclear Fissioneers Incorporation of Jamaica. 
position 4. You glide Gen 4X. I have come and I tell me about how oh, like, 50,000, everything plug out, TV plug out. The Met Service of Jamaica recorded um, the highest temperature ever in June. Fridge plug out of my yard. I must joke here run. Imagine coming from work and there's no electricity because the sun has set. Imagine a place where skies are bright, no longer tainted by carbon light. I'm really sorry for stealing your life. I can't afford to be paying $30,000 and I barely be able to light. After the SMRs are built, it will provide up to 94% of Jamaica's power, reducing the country's vulnerability to energy price fluctuations. And it will also lead to a major cut in the cost of electricity. The water that flows through the reactor core is kept at a very high pressure to prevent, to prevent it from boiling. The steam generator will generate steam to the turbines. The rest will go to a hydrogen plant. Using a candle reactor allows for that reactor to be fueled while it is in operation. And so you don't, it is a lot more reliable. As you can see here, the circles represent um, earthquake activities around Jamaica. So we decided to place the nuclear plant here. Money. <laughs> Right? We need it. So we can't make this. The world set free from a carbon sting. Imagine what a spectacular beauty it would bring. So how about we get money from the Caribbean islands around us and say, you see when we get the extra resources from the nuclear reactor and our benefits and the medicine and the sciences and the little extra knowledge, we give you some of that and make a nuclear reactor for you. Coming in first place, the nuclear engineering specialist and safety oh, yeah. For coming first place, you have been awarded each a tablet PC. that we were very, very impressed with all groups. And so, so we say, you know what? Everybody I get tablet. <laughs> So we have approximately 30 students now who have immersed themselves into the nuclear energy thought and they are speaking the language in such a profound and authentic way that when I listen to them I just can't believe that five days would have done this. After this week, you folks know more about nuclear engineering and nuclear energy than anyone, than most people in the Caribbean. How you feel? Good. You feel good? We had perceptions and we have ideas, but now we are learning the truth, and the truth is what matters. Thank you so very much.